Hi, it's Jocelyn. In this episode, we're going to be building a UI for our voice journal. I'm going to be covering a large number of topics very quickly, so bear with me. Um, first of all, just to rip the band-aid off, I am going to be using Electron, which always attracts a certain amount of hatred when it comes up, mainly because for every instance of Electron that you have open, that is an instance of Chromium, which is not fantastic for memory usage. However, there are a number of advantages to Electron compared to the alternatives, um, at least from my point of view. First of all, I think it's a really great way to make a cross-platform application. I don't need to worry about the um, visual differences between Windows, Mac, and Linux. I can test it one place and know that it's going to work the same on other platforms. Um, for better or for worse, this is kind of the way things are moving. People expect each application to kind of have its own design language, and I'm going to be adopting that. Secondly, it has excellent tooling on all three platforms. Um, web tooling has come a long way in the past few years, and just being able to package really easily and you know, having it deal with code signing and updating and all that is fantastic. Um, thirdly, it keeps the option of building a web application um, open. In the future, we can compile our Rust to WebAssembly and use that in a web application, um, which is something I want to explore in the future. Um, and finally, it allows us to build a declarative UI using React. Having used declarative UI, it's very hard to go back to building UIs imperatively, in my opinion. So I just want to quickly go over some of the other options I could have chosen. Um, one option, of course, is GTK. And I think that if you're building a native application that you want to look native um, on GTK platforms in Linux, that is a great choice. It is less mature on Mac and Windows. Um, I tried GTK Rust a few months ago using Brew on Mac. And the Hello World application just crashed. I tried again recently and it worked, but um, it's just not as mature. And the whole like tooling you need to um, build it, to um, package it, that is all just a lot less mature on those platforms as well. It's possible, it's just a lot less mature, and it doesn't look native on those platforms um, the same way that Electron wouldn't look native on those platforms. But at least with Electron, I have more control over how it looks. It also doesn't offer declarative UI. There's a project called VGTK, which is very neat, um, but it doesn't offer the kind of escape hatches you need for when um, VGTK doesn't, hasn't declared um, the widget declaratively correctly. Um, so just some things aren't really possible in VGTK. Another option is Tari, which is an alternative to Electron that uses whatever happens to be the native um, OS provided web render. Aside from increasing the test surface a little bit, um, I also didn't like the way that um, the way that IPC um, works between the Rust code and the JavaScript code. Um, as we'll see, NAPI Rust is like very smooth and, and it has to compete with that. Um, there's another project called um, 60FPS, and this is from the Cute Guys, um, and it looks very interesting. Um, it's also declarative UI, and it's native. Um, the main problem there is the licensing, the maturity, and um, also the fact that it isn't really compatible with the web. Um, they have that as sort of something that they do have like a WebAssembly version, but it's not as smooth as just native for the web. Um, in licensing, it's just they have GPL or a commercial license that you can purchase. I want to keep this as open as possible so other people can just use it without worrying, um, worrying about the license, even if they're doing commercial things with it. Um, so yes, yeah, so those are the other options. They're all valid, good options. Do keep a look. Do, do take a look at them depending on what you're trying to do. Um, but yeah, um, I think we're gonna get started then. Um, so just 
I did make a few changes since the last time we um, last time uh, I coded in a live stream. Um, namely, the record function previously waited until you press Control C and then returned an audio clip. Instead, now it returns a record handle, which you can call. Um, I think it's stop. Yeah, you can call stop on, and then that returns an audio clip. And that just allows you to, or this makes it possible to use um, the record function inside the UI without blocking. And I did the same thing for play, just where it returns immediately a play handle. And the play handle you can call connect done on. And then when the playback is done, you will call that function. And this again allows you to play audio without blocking on the UI thread. Um, so yeah, so the first piece of creating the UI will be exporting um, all this code into a node module. And then we're going to be using that node module from Electron, specifically from the UI or the rendering thread. Um, just that that gives us the, the least amount of, or that, give, that avoids IPC. So the create, one crate that allows us to export Rust to Node or create um, uh, Node libraries um, that have native Rust code is using NAPI RS. The other one that's pretty popular is called Neon. Um, NAPI just released version two, which is uh, which has an extremely nice minimal um, API to export a function that takes number and returns a number, you can do something like this. Um, and it's just super simple. I really love it. Um, the Neon documentation is probably a bit nicer and it's probably a bit more mature, um, but I, I think just the simplicity here like is, is, is worth putting up with some, um, some problems. Um, so yeah, so let's install it. We will just add this to our cargo.toml and then we'll take a look at the setup instructions here. Um, so it says we, need, we also need NPI, an API derive and an API build. So for derive, that's um, this version. And for builds, that will just be a build dependency, not a um, not a regular dependency. Those are the dependencies we need. And then it's saying that it needs to be a lib rather than um, a binary. We still, we don't want to get rid of our CLI app. Um, so we're going to keep that by add, also adding a bin section with oxygen CLI, and then a path to source slash CLI.rs. Um, and then we'll just rename name.rs to CLI.rs. Um, and then here we should still be able to run cargo run. Um, let's see. Oh, it's saying that there's no lib, lib file, so we'll add that. Um, available binaries, oxygen CLA, oxygen core. So this is a C dilib, so I'm kind of surprised. Um, what am I missing here? Well, we'll say this. We'll say run oxygen CLI. Oh, I just need to do, let's see, cargo run bin oxygen CLI. Um, 
print to do that. All right, and now maybe this works. Yeah, okay, it's just because I had main.rs, not cli.rs. But now that's working and we're all good. Um, and so the next step is to add a build.rs function. Um, so if we're trying to build the lib, that will work, but we still want um, to add a build.rs function anyway. And this will just do whatever an API needs to do to create the, um, the glue that exports these kind of functions. Um, okay, and then it says we need a package.json in order to um, in order to actually um, to actually build it. So I'm going to try to find an example. Ah, package template is still one, probably. Um, so yeah, they have a package.json. We're just going to use this as our template. OK. Don't need this. We don't need this. All these opinions. Um, I don't think we need this. We do need the um, NAPI RSCLI. I don't think that we need anything else, at least immediately. Um, don't need to do things, run things through career. Really wish people kept their examples simple. Um, that's okay. Okay, and which of these platforms do we want? Um, probably makes sense to to compile for um, compile for uh, Apple Darwin or the new Max. I think that's probably all we need, and also include all the default ones. Um, we need our name, this will be oxygen core, and this will also be oxygen core. And we're using version 0.0.0. .0, .0. Um, and I think maybe this is okay, so let's Let's um, do npm install. Need node installed to run this, run this kind of code, and then we can run hopefully npm run build debug. Okay. Um, so now we can see that we have, hopefully, hmm, didn't see it actually build anything. I don't see an index.js. Oh, maybe that's because we, we haven't actually exported anything yet. So let's just try something simple to start with. So um, I think we need Something like that and see if this works. Okay. And now we have an index.js file which imports the node file. And hopefully we also have some type definitions. So here we see that it has like a test function. Um, so then we can run node. We can say O equals require the current folder. Um, 
and we can run o.test. And that doesn't do anything, but we can see that our native code is exported to Node and we can uh, require it from Node and use it. So that's a pretty good start. Um, so next I'm going to implement, um, implement our UI or like the state for our UI. So we're building something like this um, where on the left we'll have a list of clips and on the right we will have a view of the current clip. Um, in addition to this, one of the clips is going to just be, or one of the things in the list is just going to be new recording. And that tab is going to be the recording you get, or the, ta the tab you get when you're recording a new clip. Um, so that's just basically what we're building. Um, so what will that look like? We can have something like, um, so we're going to create a new strut called UI state. It's going to have the database. And I guess we need to actually have access to the database. Um, and that's it to start with. We're not going to actually like make this visible from uh, from Node um, because we don't want to like add types for the database. It's just going to be totally opaque. Um, but we're going to um, implement some things for this UI state. So the first thing we're going to do is um, add a constructor. So this will be what you get when you do new UI state. And that will be something like, um, like this. And it's going to return a UI state. Um, with a database. I believe it's open, right? Is that right? Okay, and that's a result, um, so it can fail. We don't want to panic if it fails. Uh, what we're going to use is we're going to use a result type. Um, in the code that we used for the CLI and like elsewhere in our application, we were using the result type from fail, oh, sorry, from air. Um, now, an API has its own result type, which we are going to use. And we're also going to use its air type. And we're going to convert things from the air air type to the um, an API air type uh, so that uh, an API can expose those as exceptions if we need to. And so to do that, we're going to do map air. Um, we're going to take our air. We're going to create a air from dot. Um, so from reason. The status codes are all pretty low level. You can either do it from a status or from a reason. Um, so we're going to do it from a reason, and it's just going to be a two string, um, something like that. And um, that can fail. And if everything succeeded, we need to wrap up and OK. All right, so now we have our UI state that we can create from, from JavaScript, from Node. Um, this one work in a browser because it's native code, just in case that isn't clear. It has to be run from a Node environment, which includes Electron. Um, next, I'm going to make a function which returns the list of clips. And that's going to return a back of, um, let's see, clip meta. So to do this, we're going to do self.db. Um, I think it's called list, is that what we called it? Um, and that's going to also uh, give us a result. And we'll also need to cast this to the correct error type.
feel like there's going to be a lot of that. Um, that should work. Okay, we get an error here seeing, saying that clip meta cannot be converted into two NAPI value. And that's because there's no NAPI wrapper around clip meta. Um, now, clip meta has um, date time and it has a use size. Both of those types are not types that you can export directly from um, or as public fields from NAPI. So instead, we're going to make our own wrapper around that, which has things in the correct format. Um, so let's see. I'm going to call this JS Clip Meta, and it's just going to wrap a Clip Meta. Um, and it's going to support NAPI. Clip Meta is not a public field, so that's not going to be exported. And I'm going to say that no, it's kind of that. No, that's just from before. Um, Impl clip meta, it's going to have a getter uh, for um, what's it called? For ID. It's going to return a view size, I think. We'll see if that works. I know it can't be a field, it might be able to be a return value though. Um, and we're also going to have that for name and for date. Um, so I think, so, uh, let's see, going back to our NAPI thing. So I know that in, a, in an API, the date is kind of a newer feature. Um, So, where are, okay, so let's go to the documentation. Okay, and it says that there are different targets that you can build for, different feature flags. And we can select what version of NAPI we want to build for. Um, so, I think the newest one should be fine. Just going to get that started to compile and then verify that. Um, so I'm going to go back. They say they have a version matrix. Um, oh, over there. All right, so version 8 is any version of 16 or the newest versions of 15, 14, 12. That's perfect. So NAPI version 8 is totally fine. Um, so now we should be able to get our JS date whenever that finishes uh, compiling. And I should probably go back to the documentation for NAPI. All right, yes, now we have JS date. Um, now, any of these functions that have an API, they, they have an optional environment um, attribute, which we can uh, just pass. And this environment attribute um, has a lot of useful types or a lot of useful methods, like, for example, create, I think it is create date. Um, let me just save this to try to get types. Right, these have to be public. JS okay, I'm actually getting this type correctly. Yeah, it exists. Um, well, I'll do this first.
Yeah, it should have a create date function. I don't know why type completion isn't working, but hopefully it works soon. Um, and this is also going to be a result, it looks like. Um, and it accepts a number of milliseconds since, um, since the epic. So that'll be self.0.date. Um, and then that will be self.0.date. Let's see. And I don't remember how to get the, I guess we can look up the, the uh, documentation for Chrono. Okay, so this is the date time. All right, number of seconds, and there's time stamp milli, which I think is what we want. And as F64. Okay, so now that exists. Um, so now we can return, instead of that, we can return a JS clip meta. I'm actually going to just implement that from clip meta for JS clip meta. Um, just so we can do um, this. I was trying to be a little bit idiomatic. Um, and then we can, so we map the air, we're going to map the okay case as well. So clips, clips dot into Twitter. This whole thing will be okay. Um, and then we're going to do the map clip um, JS clip meta from clip. And another parenthesis. Um, and we need to collect those. Oh, right, no, we don't need to wrap it okay because we're mapping the okay case and the error case. All right, um, and is being kind of weird, so I'm just going to reload it. But hopefully, now we can build it. Okay, so it's saying that some things in our crates aren't defined. So I guess we probably need to um, make sure that all of our modules, we're loading all of our modules here as well. Okay, there's tons of stuff we haven't yet used in the library. Which makes sense. Okay, so it's successfully built. We can look at the types now. Um, and we see here that we have a UI state and we have a JS clips meta thing. And when we call JS clips, we get this. Um, it looks like it's exporting the date type as JS date. I think this is just one of the t cases where um, the uh, where an API RS is just not entirely. Um, entirely stable yet. So I think we can do something like this. Um, unknown attribute, let's see. Okay, found it. So there's a thing called skip types, uh, sorry, called um, TS return type, which we're going to use. And maybe I should file an issue for that. That's probably a bug. Like it should, should probably just be a date, not a JS date. Um, anyway, looking at this now, 
wait, it's just a date type. So now we should be able to run node. Control to require itself. We should be able to do um, UI equals new go dot UI state. Um, then we should be able to do UI dot get clips. And then we have array of clips. If we look at the zeroth one, um, we put the name, we can look at the ID, and we can look at the uh, date, and we see that the date has a reasonable timestamp. Um, and so that's all native code, as you can see. Otherwise, we wouldn't have been able to access our SQLite database. So that is pretty promising. Um, Actually, this is enough for us to get started with the UI, so I'm going to uh, now continue on to the next thing, which is electron and parcel. Um, so first of all, I'm going to just move all of this stuff into a folder called core. So I'm not actually sure what the best way to do this is. Um, but I'm just going to do ls, uh, let's see, ls a dot, get all the list of files here. Um, I'm going to move all of these, oops, move all of these files into core, except for core. And nope, actually, oxygen to SQL can move as well. Um, so this all looks good. Let's do this. Um, So, oh, I forgot to check which files weren't tracked. Um, let's just do this first. Yeah, yeah there's too many things that aren't tracked. Okay, so let's look at our gitignore. Okay, so we have target, and then now it's core slash target. Um, we want star.node, probably shouldn't be tracked. Um, core slash index.js and core slash index.d.ts are generated, and we'll see if I missed anything. New file, ah, uh, no modules. Okay, this looks good. And so if we go into core, we should still be able to do cargo run. Looks good. And we should still be able to do npm run build debug. All right, okay. Now I'm going to make a new file called UI, or actually I'm going to do npm init UI. Mm. No, I'm going to do UI, maybe that's right. Package name, we're going to call this oxygen UI, uh, 0, 0, 0. Um, we're going to start in source slash main.js. We're not going to test it. Um, looks great. OK, so. Now we're going to open package.json and install some things that we need. Um, so first of all, we're going to be doing using electron. Um, which is version 16.0.7. So Parcel is a tool for building web applications. Um, it's version 2.2.0. Um, I'm going to be using also React. And if you're installing React, you also need a React DOM. Um, I always use Prettier, uh, which is like Rust format. That's going to be version 2.5.1. Uh, 
um, let's see, am I forgetting anything that I often use? Um, and install ESLint by using something else. Um, yeah, I know, I think this is enough to get started. So I'm going to run npm install, which will probably take a moment. In which we can question our choices of using the web ecosystem. Um, things are getting better, but it's still, still sometimes not super fast. Uh, but when this is done, we're going to go through the Electron Quick Start Guide. Um, and so as it says before, we need to add Electron to it, which we've done. And we can start running it by running Electron Dot. So Electron, there are multiple processes. In Electron, there are multiple processes that get run. There is the main process, um, which is what spins up immediately when you run, run Electron. And there's the renderer process, which is where all the UI happens. Um, so at least initially, the main process is going to look very simple. Um, but later, but um, in some applications, all the native code happens in the main thread and there's some IPC to, to communicate between the main thread and the renderer. However, the renderer in Electron is also a, um, is also a native um, uh, node environment. So we can um, enable node integration and use those node modules there as well. And that is gonna be more efficient with transferring lots of data. That can be a security issue in some cases. Um, but it's not going to be a security issue for us because we control all of the code that gets run. Um, so it's saying that we should create a window here. Um, oops. I guess we need to have a source directory. Um, I guess we probably need to import browser window. Pretty is working. Um, I'm actually going to not load a, let's see, do we have our types working? We do look at that. I'm actually going to not load a file at first. So yeah, win.webcontents. I'm just going to open, start by opening the dev tools. Um, that method exists, and we're going to open it on the bottom. Um, then it says to do that, we need to, when the app is ready, our app is not going to import, uh, we can create the window. Um, there's also kind of some Mac specific behavior, basically when all the windows are closed, um, except on Mac, um, the app should quit. Um, and also some more Mac specific behavior, if you like activate it, which um, means like clicking on the dock icon for it, it should create a window. I think this also is like if you run another or try to open a second instance. Um, so I guess we should probably load some kind of URL. I wonder if like about blank works. All right, there we go. And we can do console. Actually, I'm not showing it right now. Um, let's see. There we go. We can do console.log hello world. And there you have it. Um, I'm going to just close that now. And now we need an ap application to actually load. So that's where parcel comes in. Um, so I'm going to follow the example here. So we already installed Parcel. 
plan. So I'm just going to create an index.html file uh, just like this. Um, instead of my first parcel app, we'll just call it oxygen. Um, and then now we should be able to run, um, I'm going to just split this here. We should be able to run npx parcel source index.html. npx is just a command which um, runs um, run something uh, in node modules or installs it and runs something. Um, you could also do something like uh, dot slash node module has been uh, parcel. It's the same thing. Anyway, we can do HT colon slash slash localhost one two three four, and we get this. Um, so now, in order to have Electron run that, we can just use HT colon slash slash localhost one two three four. Um, then I can, oops, I didn't need to close that. Then I can just start Electron. There we go. So now you can see that it says hello world. Um, so I'm just going to click that. And now we can start. Um, uh, so, so now we have our index.html file, but there's no actual JavaScript. Um, so we're going to continue reading how to do that. Um, so I'm going to skip the style section and go straight to uh, straight to a script. So that is, let's see, in the head we'll just add a script um, and we'll say app.js. So I'm actually going to call this renderer.js since it's going to be the renderer um, uh, process is entry point. So I'll open that and I'm just going to have this say hello world. All right, and we have our console. It now says hello world, which is perfect. So now we have some basic JavaScript. Um, so that's all we really need for now from Purcell. The next thing I'm going to do is actually load our oxygen module into the renderer process. So to do this, first of all, in main.js, we need to um, turn context isolation off. Um, we, can, we can also just turn node integration on um, and then somehow use require in the renderer thread. Um, but what's recommended is that you instead have a preload path. So we actually need to require path and the path.join. Their name is the current folder and we'll say um, source preload.js. Um, and uh, we're going to open package.json. I'm going to add a dependency to oxygen core on dot dot slash core. Then in source slash preload.js, I can say window.oxygen is equal to require um, oxygen core. Um, now preload and renderer.js get run in the same uh, process. However, um, preload.js has access to native modules, um, whereas um, uh, the renderer.js file and everything else that gets imported from it will not have access to uh, require, but we can um, give it access to, uh, to oxygen using this. Um, so I'm going to try this again, see if now we have access to window.oxygen. 
Okay. Oh, there's actually an error over here. Oh, I did not run npm install. Which should give us access to oxygen core. Okay. Hmm. Unable to load preload script. UI source source preload.js. Okay, that makes sense. Let's, um, because it's already in source. Let's try this. Okay, so now we hopefully have access to window to oxygen. We do. So we can say like UI equals new window oxygen UI state. And then we can do UI dot get clips. And there's nothing there because in our current file, our current folder, there's no um, oxygen.sqlite. We see init schema and update schema. So I'm just, so, so there should be, yeah, there's an oxygen.sqlite file here. So I'm just gonna go to core, copy oxygen.sqlite to the current folder, just so we have access to clips, um, and then run it again. Okay. You can say UI equals um, new UI state, and then UI dot get clips. We have a number of clips, and you can look at the first one and see its name, and see its ID, and see its date. Amazing. Um, so we can quit that now. I am now going to, so now we need to be able to actually access it um, over here. So we could just use window.oxygen. However, um, that doesn't give us any types. And so if we want types, we need to convince parcel to, um, to let us import it. So parcel actually has a feature for this. Um, which is that if in package.json, uh, if we add an alias, um, we can say oxygen core is equal to the global variable oxygen. Um, and now what we can do is we can do const oxygen is equal to Require, or it's actually, we're using ES modules. So we can do import oxygen from oxygen core, or rather, I guess, um, UI state from this, and then we can, uh, we can use it in here. Um, looks like that compiled nicely. So now we're just going to make um, a list of all of our ballpark clips. So to do that, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, for here, copy div with the id root. Um, I think that I can't quite figure out what the formatting is supposed to be, but that's okay. Um, so to do UIs, we're using React. I'm not going to go over uh, React too much today. Again, this is a whirlwind tour. Um, but Initializing it looks something like this. Um, I'm going to create a function. Um, I call it main, which is going to return our list, uh, or it's going to return what we should render our UI state with using React. So to do that, we can say UI state is equal to um, This callback will only get only get called in the first run. 
cotton pen. It's going to be a list. Get clips. Um, each thing in a, each um, item in an array in Rust, sorry, in React needs its own uh, own key, which needs to be unique for the things in the list. So we'll do clips uh, dot map. We'll do clip goes to li key is equal to clip dot id. Um, and we'll just uh, give the clip name, the clip date, and the clip ID, rendering it as simply as possible. And then to actually render this to the DOM, um, we're going to do react DOM um, dot render. Uh, document dot get um, uh, sorry the first item is the uh, JSX element and the second one is get element by ID and we named um, the thing in index HTML we named that root so this is pretty exciting now looks like that compiles so now if all went well Hmm, something crashed. Objects are not valid as a React child. Um, oh, I see. We probably we probably need these things to be strings. Uh, I'm hiding it, not fitting. So I'll just do that dot to string. And now we have a list. There was just the problem is just that the uh, the what's it called? Uh, date is an object, and it looks like ID is not getting rendered, which is kind of interesting. And that's just because it was um, the wrong type. It looks like it was like a. Um, I forget what these kinds are, like three n or whatever. Um, Begins. So I guess begins don't get automatically converted to strings or something. I don't know. Or React doesn't convert them or whatever. But now we have a list of clips. Um, I think the next thing I want to do is to make this look a little bit less terrible. Um, so to do that, I'm going to be using Tailwind, um, which is a CSS framework that is quite unlike other kinds of CSS frameworks. Um, let's see if I can look at the examples here. Um, so usually you'd kind of do CSS like this, where you give class names that represent some, uh, some component or something, and then define what that looks like. Um, instead here, you just, like this adds, this sets the padding to six, um, this sets the background to white, that kind of thing. And I really like this just because it gives you like a subset of CSS to work with um, without needing to know all the ins and outs. Um, CSS has a huge surface area and as somebody who's not primarily a UI author, <laughs> it's really nice to not be able to or not need to worry too much about it. It says here that we can install it using post CSS um, and Fortunately, um, Parcel also has documentation on how to use PostCSS. So we're going to use those two together. So to use PostCSS in um, Parcel, we make a PostCSS RC file and we make a file like this um, and then Tailwind says it needs something like that. Um, I guess it's not realizing that this is a JSON file. I think we can also, let's see. Yeah, it also lets it be a PostDSS um, rc.json. If we do that, then it will realize that it's JSON. 
which is good. Um, not sure if that worked or not, but I'm just going to run that. Okay. And we probably want to install um, Post CSS auto prefixer and that. So I'm just going to do this. This will add it to package.json. And then once we're done with that, we need a few more files. Um, so we're going, it looks like we need a um, tailwind.config.js. Oops. I guess I should use the copy button there to get new lines to actually work. Um, and we need these directives in our CSS. So I guess that means we need to add a um, add a styles thing. So we're going to add this to our HTML file. We're going to create index.css file, and that's going to have these lines. Okay, fail to parse package.json. Fail to resolve index.css from index.html. That's because it's in the wrong folder. It's being source. Taking a moment to build. Um, all right, so now we're going to make this look a little bit prettier, um, which we do, of course, by adding purple. So border right, uh, we'll say purple and make it really purple 900. We also need to give it the width, um, which we will do border right two. Um, and so that will be something like this. Beautiful. Um, these, this autocomplete, by the way, is from Tailwind's language server that they provide uh, for our autocomplete. Works great if you, um, it's easier to set up in Visual Studio Code, but you can definitely get it set up in the um, COC ecosystem in, uh, in NeoVim. I'll add a link to my config in the description. Um, then we want this to be horizontally full. We'll make a divider between all of the uh, things below it, and we'll make that divider um, also purple, just a little bit less so. Um, and right now the entire page is scrolling. Um, the right side of that is actually supposed to be um, supposed to be like the other pane as we saw earlier. So I'm going to say overflow y auto, and that way it'll scroll hopefully. And so already that's looking much, much better. Um, next up for our for these things, we're going to add some padding. Um, so we're going to um, do that. Hopefully that adds some padding. Um, these things, when you select them, when you mouse over them, should um, uh, should probably look different. So. The, uh, there are um, hover prefixes for that kind of thing. Um, we'll make the cursor pointer for that. Um, and more purple is always a good thing. You can see why they don't let me do UIs very often at work. Um, but yeah, now that, that's pretty nice. Um, so the, let's see. It's still scrolling the entire page though, which is not what I expected. Um, let's see. I guess maybe the, well, we want two panes over here. So we'll just, um, let's see. We'll give this, we'll make this cover the entire screen. So 
uh, this is just saying that the width is the screen width and the height is also the screen height. Okay, now we have this, but these are scrolling. Um, so I think we can fix that with an overflow. Uh, of, uh, let's see. I think overflow looks this is what I'm looking for. Yeah. I'll put overflow for them. Okay. And now we have our ellipsis as we expect. Um, okay, now to make the stuff inside here look a little bit nicer. Um, so we'll give the clip names a heading. Um, I think medium sized text that is bold should be good. Should be font bold, I believe. Okay. There, now it's actually bold. Okay, so now we have some meta information. So we do class name text or flex flex row um, because we want a row of flex items. Um, and then for the first one, we'll do um, extra small text with light font. And I think there's not actually a point of showing the ID. Um, that was just to show it's looking. Okay, so hopefully we can format this in a more useful format. Um, so I'm actually going to look up how to do that. Uh, should probably specify the language. All right, seems like to date string might be a good option. That doesn't give us the time. Um, yeah, let's get the time too. to locale time string. Nope, that's just the timestamp, so I guess we'll do both. Oops. I guess we need that. And there we have it. Now we have our list of, of, um, of things. Um, thought that we had an ellipsis thing going on here, but it looks like that's not working. Um, or maybe, oh right, because we moved the, uh, we moved the, that class, so we need to move the overflow here. Overflow ellipsis. Maybe overflow hidden needs to be very full. Okay, and when we hover it, we want the full thing to show up. So to do that, we'll do, I believe it's name is equal to clip.name. Or is it alt? Um, I'm going to add some type checking to this. Since I'm running the TypeScript server, um, it's capable of checking these things. Okay, so big int is not assignable type key. Sure, so we'll multiply that by one, or maybe there's um, t string would also work. I'm just going to do this. Casting number, or uh, let's see, doesn't want me to do that either. Uh, t string fun. Okay, um, so I'm just going to look up how to do hover text in HTML because apparently it's not name. Um, 
title. Okay, so now I can hover over this, hopefully, and I get the phone. You can't see it in the, um, I guess it's a separate window, so you can't see it in the preview. But when I hover over this, I see the phone name over there. Um, okay, and those pairs are gone. So this is about it, I think, for the left side. Um, so now we're going to need to implement the right side. Um, also, like I said, there's a separate tab for recording. So I guess we can actually do that first. Um, let's say, uh, let's see. I'm just going to call this, let's say this is record music. And that's just going to be on top. Um, and we want this to look pretty similar to the other ones, I think. So um, the same classes here apply. Um, so in the documentation and tutorial for uh, Tailwind, they actually recommend just copying paste, cost copy pasting things from the right next to each other. And that's honestly one of the reasons I picked Tailwind over something else. That's just, um, I think a lot of times we, uh, especially in UI, um, like make our own custom classes way too often instead of, um, or try to abstract way, uh, way too early. Um, actually, what happened here? I messed this up. There we go. When it's just easier to copy paste and there's less technical debt that way. Um, so we also want this kind of thing. I think it might look pretty nice centered. Um, so to do that, Maybe we can do, let's see. We do flex, flex, row, justify, center. Does that work? There we go. Okay. Um, and I think this might look good with, um, I think this might look good with an icon. There is a thing called hero icons. Uh, made by the same people as um, as Tailwind, and I kind of love this. Um, they just have a copy JSX button right there. So I could install the MTM module for this, but I just love that I can do this. Um, just paste this here. Then I can just run the record icon. Wonderful. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Um, might want a little bit more padding on this one compared to the other ones. So right now it's padding two, maybe we can like make it four. I think that's good. Okay, so now we need to implement the rest of our UI in Rust. Um, so to do that, I'm going to go back to our core um, and I'm going to open up our library and we're going to continue implementing parts of it. Um, so we see here that there's either, that we either have a, um, like the record new clip thing selected or we have one of the clips selected. So I'm just going to make a, an enum um, called tab. There's not an easy way to export enums to an API. So uh, we're going to have to make functions to export the current state, but I still want to use enum to represent the state. And the tab is either record, um, which uh, we'll fill in in a second, or it is uh, an existing clip, uh, which we'll also fill in in a second. And we'll have a tab. Okay. And when we're creating it, um, oops, 
and you'll need the default tab. Um, so I'm going to start with the record tab as the one that is selected. Um, it's still indexing, which is why I don't have completions yet. Hopefully I will soon. And um, I'm going to make a function for whether for the selected clip and for whether um, the record new clip tab is selected. Um, so for the clip, it's going to have an audio clip backing it. Um, while I wait for completion, hopefully I got that right. Um, so it's going to have current, we'll call it get current clip. Or actually, we can just make this a getter, I guess. Why not? It's cheap. Current clip, which takes a reference to self and returns an option to. Um, guess, guess we'll do current clip ID. So returns an option to a U size. So this will be, um, we'll match the current tab. Still indexing. This is because I guess it's because we moved the file earlier. Okay, so now we have our completion working again. Um, so I'm going to match on the tab, uh, which can either be record um, in which case there is none, or it can be clip. Um, which will have an ID. Oh, it's struggling with all the things open. Okay. This is, oh, it already is an ID. Um, it is a logic error if there is no ID for a saved clip. So I think we're gonna do expect here and just crash if there's something wrong. Saved clips must have IDs. Um, right, and we can take a reference here. Okay, that looks promising. And it looks like also we can just use that shorter syntax. And so um, we can also have another getter here. Just get record tab selected and that's just the pool. And we're gonna use the matches thing here, which is um, self tab. We wanna make sure that it matches tab record. Okay, um, so now we should be able to tell what is selected without being able to change it. But that is a good start. So let's um, gonna run npm run build debug again to update the node module. And then I actually need to, you actually need to restart Electron in order to pick that up. So I'm gonna just do that right now. Just a note here that while the app is closed, um, you do not see the most up-to-date version. Okay. You just see whatever it looked like when it was closed. Okay, so um, now I can 
So now uh, there are some things added to UI state. Um, so we got clips. We can say recording tab selected is equal to UI state dot um, record tab selected. Wonderful. Um, so I'm actually going to um, add another utility because we want it to make we want to make it look different when it's selected. And to do that, we could do some logic with um, you know we have to some logic to make the correct class name. There's a tool for this um, called class names. Um, for conditionally joining class names together. With hopefully they have an example here. So there's like this. Um, that's like the simplest example. But they have all sorts of other formats you can do. Um, if you just make something false, uh, then it won't be included, which means you can do like some Boolean and and the class name and get a useful class name that way. Um, so we're going to use that. The current version is 2.3.1. So add this as another dependency. Class name is 2.3.1. And I will just run and get install. And then import that. I'm actually going to call it CX just because um, import, like using the class names variable everywhere, is um, is kind of is like uh, kind of janky. So we're going to make it look different when it, uh, when it is selected. So to do that, I'm going to um, use CX. So this is all; these classes are always true. And uh, when um, the record tab is selected, we're going to uh, make the background color purple because we like purple. Um, we're going to make the text white. We're going to change the hover color as well um, so that it's also uh, dark purple when you hover it. And we're going to make the cursor default. All right. Oh, I see. So I'm going to move the padding over here just so that the whole thing is purple, hopefully. And I can't see it, but when this is select, when I mouse over it, um, it's just the regular cursor, not the, or not the hand. Um, and again, even though we can't see it yet because we can't change anything, um, I'm going to let's see. Even though I can't, yeah, even though it won't change anything, I'm going to. Um, also do the same thing for these. Um, so CX, these are all true. And like the documentation recommends, I'm just going to um, do this. So we have UI state dot current clip ID. If that is equal to the clip ID, and then we do all of this. Okay, so now we need a way. Um, now we need a way to actually change which clip is selected. So back to our REST code. So first of all, we're going to do this. Um, it's going to take an ID. And then it's going to say self.tab um, is equal to tab.clip. And we're going to try to find that clip. So 
shall be from the database dot load. Um, and that takes well, that takes a name, um, which are also unique. I'm going to make a separate ID function for this. Um, hopefully, I won't take too long. Same logic as here, just going to be load by ID. I'm going to take an ID, which is a U size. And instead of where name equals whatever, it's going to be where ID equals whatever. Um, and it's going to run it with ID. And the rest should be the same. OK, so now where we have our load by ID function, we have our clip. Um, That's a weird error because, oh, nope, 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 never mind, we're fine. Okay, so this does return an error though, so we need to handle that. So if everything is okay, we will return okay. And if not, well, we need to um, uh, replace our error with the correct format like we've done above. So that's just error. Um, Reason e dot two string. And question mark. All right, so now we have um, a clip. Um, and we can say if it is something, so let let, no, if let. <laughs> Um, and we say self dot tab is equal to tab clip with this audio clip. And if not, we will silently fail. Okay, um, so let's build this and see if it works. So what we're going to do here, just while we wait, is we're going to add an on-click thing here. So on-click, um, we're going to take an event. Um, usually it's good to just uh, call prevent default whenever you're handling an event. Um, and then we have the clips ID in scope here. Um, so we're going to do UI state. And we're going to call our new function. Um, it's still compiling. So we should have it now, actually. UI state dot. Did I get it right? Oh, I forgot to add the end API wrapper there. Um, but it's called set current clip ID. And it's clip dot ID. And this doesn't exist yet, but it will soon. Um, there's an error here. Um, it's not implemented for U size. So what can we take? Can we take a U64? So it's fine as a return type, it's interesting. Also not for U64. Let's keep on going down until we get something that works. Um, or I guess I could look at what types are valid. That's probably more reasonable.
All right, so, um, oh, maybe this is working. Nope, oh, yep, that worked. Just trying things until they work just faster. Um, so now if we try loading this again, we should have set current clip ID. Um, big int is not assignable to number though. Um, I guess I should look up how to do that. Passing it to the number constructor. I wonder why, yes, I wonder why begins can't be passed as um, parameters. I'll find that out soon. Anyway, um, this doesn't work because it's not a function, and that's just because we need to uh, restart electron. So we could be we could instead have all the state in in like something like Redux, um, but I, I like having it all in Rust. Rust I think is great for managing state. So it's probably getting called. We don't have any logs that's getting called, but there's nothing forcing it to re-render. Um, so we need some way some way of saying, hey React, you should re-render this um, after when something changes. Um, so to do that, we're going to add a callback, which we will, which will help us re-render things um, when when things change. So to do that, this gets a little bit confusing. Um, any API Rust has a thing called a um, thread save function. And these thread save functions um, we can pass to another thread, I guess, hence the point, and we'll call it when something changes, which is great. So we're going to do that. Um, so to this, I'm going to say, um, I'm going to create an update callback, and it's going to be a type thread save function, that one. Um, there's not going to be any type, it's just going to be called when something changes and the thing needs to get re-rendered. You need to specify an error strategy for, for thread save functions, either uh, when something goes wrong. The first argument of the callback is the error, or you can just crash. We don't expect any errors, so we're just going to crash. Um, and that's part of the type, just because um, depending on which thing you choose, the signature in JavaScript actually does change. Um, so now we need to actually set this. So what we're going to do is in our UI state, we're going to accept a callback. And this is going to be a function. Um, looks good. And we need to convert this JS function which is just a garbage collected JavaScript type to a thread save function. And the thread save function keeps track of the lifetime and like ensures it's valid and all that jazz. Um, so to convert to, from a uh, JS function to this fancy type, we do uh, updates callback dot create thread save function. Um, and the first thing here that accepts, and this is, I learned this by looking at the documentation uh, from, uh, from the NAPI C library, is uh, just the max Q size. And if you set it to zero, there is no max Q size, which means you can call this as many times as you want. Um, and then there's a handler which converts the arguments um, that we set over here to JavaScript arguments. For us, that's really easy because we have no arguments. Um, so it accepts the JavaScript context, more about that later probably, um, and we'll return a vector that is empty because there are no arguments being passed to the callback. Um, 
and it's saying that it can fail. Okay, what else is the problem? Cannot infer type for type parameter B. What is B? B is an API raw. Oh, okay. So it's just saying it doesn't know what type the vector is. So we're going to use JS unknown, uh, which just can be any JavaScript type. Doesn't really matter what it is since there are no arguments, but Rust is um, type safe, so we need it to be something. Okay, um, and now we're going to call this when something changes. So for example, when we've changed the clip ID. So to do that, we'll say update callback. Um, hopefully, you know, let's see, it's not call. Expected two arguments. What are the two arguments? There is the value and the mode. Okay, so the value, there's nothing. We don't pass anything. And the mode, that will be code safe function call mode. Um, probably not the system version. Stop blocking. Um, maybe, I don't know, do we care? Is their description here? Whatever. We don't, yeah, things can continue happening. Uh, I guess it doesn't need to block. Okay, so let's compile this now. Um, and then while we're waiting, um, we'll need to pass something over here. So we're going to use a, uh, we're going to use a callback. Um, so, I think that imported it, right? Did not import it. Well, let's import it. Okay, use callback, and that's going to update something. Uh, for now, we'll just do console.log something updated. Expected two arguments, right? There's a list of dependencies. This has no dependencies. And again, we changed our native code, so we need to reload um, Electron. Okay, so when we click here, we get something updated, which is a really good sign. Um, now we just need to re-render. Um, so the way I'm actually going to do that is, um, it's kind of kind of a little bit of a hack. So it's going to be, and this should, I think, um, force an update. When this changes. Okay, so let's see if that works. Look at that, it does. So what happens is um, it calls the callback and then it sets update symbol to something else. React sees that the state has changed, so it forces a re-render. Um, I'm just gonna even note because that's a little bit of a hack. All right. Okay, so now we need to do playback and um, and recording. So I'm going to start with playback. Um, so it's going to be a function to play. Let's see if it needs anything. So this only applies when you are on a tab which um, which is an audio clip. Um, let's see, tab. And 
and we'll have a playback status that we add to here. Um, and we'll just say, let's see. Hope I got this from this wish. This should be um, something like this. Here when we're creating it, the handle will be none. Yeah, it looks like somehow my formatter died. Um, we can get our handle and set our handle to some audio. Um, clip dot play. And this can fail, so as always, uh, we need to convert this to a result if applicable. So, and this will be the same thing as before. Map our air, we take an air, and we use our from reason function. I just don't want to reference. Um, ah, it actually wants this. Okay, and this should play, and if everything is successful, then we'll just call it okay. Um, And while that's happening, I'm just going to run prettier on that, not prettier, rest format on that. Okay, so something else is missing handle. That's fine. We're just um, getting the ID over there. And that might be all, all the errors. Okay, and while that's building, hopefully that works for while that's building, we're just gonna make the right side over here. Okay, so now we're going to make a play button when one of these tabs are selected. So to do that, we'll go um, UI state. We'll check to see if the current clip ID is anything. So if it is undefined or null, we won't enter this, otherwise we will. Um, and we'll have a button which does play. And because we're using Tailwind by default, it's entirely unstyled. Um, so we'll see a button right there, but we need to make it actually look like a button. Um, so first of all, I'm going to do, I'm going to make this flex, I'm going to make it a flex grow, just for now. Um, we might change this in the future. Um, I'm going to add a spacer before this. Um, and also a spacer after this. I'm going to um, give this a purple background um, and white text. And I'm going to give it um, probably some padding. And what else? Um, some border radius. Uh, I guess that's just. Um, let's. Rounded, okay. Rounded, we'll say medium, and we'll see what this looks like. And then go from there. Okay, so um, we probably want this to grow. Great, so now we have this. Um, and so Maybe we can make the margin auto. Maybe that will um, 
yeah, there we go. Now we have a nice ugly play button. Um, we're going to use large text um, and we'll make it bold as well. I'm not going to say this is the prettiest thing ever, but it does work. Um, so I'm now going to go to Hero Icons again and find the play icon. Um, look at that. Okay, so we're copying JSX again. I'm going to say let's play is equal to this. And then I'm going to use it over here. Now we have that. This should probably be just flex. Everything should be flex. All right, and I want a little bit more spacing. So I'm going to say, it, it, that might be too much. We'll find out. It is. Um, I want less padding. Somewhere in between it was eight before, then there. Two over here, we'll eventually get this. Maybe the bold looks a little bit weird. All right, and when you hover it, um, we'll just give some hints that you hovered it by making it less purple. All right, and now we have to do something when you click it, so we're gonna do something like we did before. So event dot prevent default, and then also UI state dot play. And we don't just select what's playing because it just play it just plays the selected song or selected clip rather. So we're all good there. Let's see if this works. We got an error, it looks like. Play is not a function. I guess we just need to uh, restart this. So that worked. And we can change it, we can play another clip. Very cool. Um, now we need some kind of hint that it is playing. So this actually is going to involve a few things. Um, so first of all, once this happens, we should probably call the update callback because we have played something. All right, so now we need to do something when um, the playback completes. Um, so to do that, we're actually going to need another callback. Um, just for when this finishes. So we're going to call this on, um, on done. Uh, it'll be a JS function. And it, this is going to look a lot like what we did before. Um, we're going to use a create thread save function here. So we're going to say let on done is equal to um, on done dot create thread save function blah blah blah. It's also not going to accept anything. Um, then what we're going to do is we're going to say that when we are done, um, we're going to call that function. And it should look like it looked before. Thread save function call mode, uh, non blocking. Um, this is a thread save function, which is good. Um, what's failing here? Oh, we need to specify the um, 
uh, the type. So there's no arguments, um, but we do need to specify the, um, the air handling strategy, which is in the air strategy enum. And that needs to be uh, fatal. If something goes wrong, then it will just uh, throw an exception or panic rather. Okay. Um, so we probably need to move this over here. Okay, and then we can make a stop function. Um, so the um, ideally we would just stop it ourselves, but and I'll have to think of a solution for this. I don't if you have one, just like drop it in the comments. Um, probably involves another thread. But play handle has a stream, and the stream cannot be sent between threads. And um, this whole connect done thing requires sending things between threads. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to tell the UI thread that we are done playing. And the UI thread is going to call stop, which is actually going to make the changes. And that's fine because the UI thread always calls things on the same thread. Um, so yeah, uh, we're going to have a stop function, which the UI call will, the UI, UI code uh, in JavaScript will call. I think this is a bit hacky. I don't love this, but this is what we're doing. Um, so we're going to match the tab. Right now, if the tab is record, um, that's not actually going to do anything. This is going to be way more interesting on the record side of things. Um, but for now, it's not going to do anything. Um, it's a clip, though. Then that's more interesting. Then it's going to um, should take any reference to this. We want the handle. And we're just going to drop it. Um, something like that. And then we'll need to, um, let's see, oh yeah, self.tab. Um, and then if something happened, we will want to, um, to update it. We, I, we can, I'm just going to indiscriminately call the update callback. Um, okay, and then we'll need a third function, which is uh, is playing or is streaming. I'm going to call it um, just so that that handles. Um, actually, I just call it get streaming. Make it a variable. Um, make it a getter. And this is going to be true if we are recording or playing. Um, so again, that depends on the tab. Um, on the record tab, well, we don't have that set up yet, so this is just going to be false. And if it is a clip, um, then it's going to be handle.isSum. Um, again, uh, REST format is not working um, because uh, it's being too slow and it's timing out. I need to look into that later or buy a new laptop, one of the two. Um, but I'm just gonna run that now since it is annoying me. Um, this looks promising. Um, uh, this does not need to be mutable. And I think we can just, um, I think we can just build this now. And while that's going, um, now we have a different state whether it's playing or not. Um, so we will have, is that working? It's looking good to me. Um, so again, we're gonna use CX over here. Um, and if the UI state um, dot streaming is true, then it's gonna look a little bit different. Um, 
going to make this, let's see, I'm going to make this white with a border. Um, let's see, border two, border purple 100, and the text is going to be um, purple 100, and on hover, it's going to be purple, um, I guess 100 probably. Oh, uh, BG purple 100. This now needs to take a callback, so we'll do that. And this is just going to say UI state dot stop. Um, and we're also going to be a little bit more clever here. We're going to say if um, UI state dot um, streaming, then we're doing this. Or rather, if it's not streaming, um, we're just toggling the state. Otherwise, uh, UI state dot stop. Um, again, this callback right here is a little bit of a hack. Um, like ideally, this wouldn't be necessary, um, but there we are. Um, so there's no streaming. It is always false. Um, there's undefined rather. We'll need to restart it to actually get it. Okay, so I'm going to select this here. See a style changes. Okay, so it looks like our style is wrong. Um, so it's um, BG white text purple 900. It looks like that isn't working. Hmm, interesting. Maybe I should just do this. Okay, so BG purple on 100. Um, And cover BG purple 800. Okay, that does it. Um, I'll just, you know, I'm just looking at the border. Okay, I'll just set the border here, uh, border two here for consistency, but I don't think it's actually necessary. Okay, and I'm going to change the icon to say pause instead of play. Um, so again, I'm going to go to here icons and look for pause. Copy the JSX. Pause is equal to this, and we're going to use it. Okay, so um, here we say play in that. So I'm going to just um, make a fragment, and it's going to say um, so if we're streaming, it's going to be something, otherwise, it's going to be what it was before. And That's what it's going to look like if it is, um, uh, if it is playing currently. Okay, that's awesome. So right now it actually stops and resets the progress rather than um, rather than actually pausing. But I'm still just going to call it, call it pause for now. The next thing to implement is switching to the record tab. Um, so to do that, I'll just make this a little bit smaller. So to do that, so we have set current clip ID. I'm going to make another function that's called 
set um, current tab record. Um, I think this one's just going to be fine. And so this is just going to, so first of all, this is going to change the state, so we'll call our update function. Um, but more importantly, we're just going to say self.tab equals tab clip, um, and, sorry, tab record rather, and there we have it. Okay, so this is going to be similar to what we did for clips, so we're going to have a handle. So this time, it's going to be a record handle. Okay, so the handle when we first start is just going to be null. And the in JavaScript is going to be none. Um, and same over here. So we have play. I'm also going to make a record function. Which only will apply when we are on the record tab, otherwise, it just doesn't do anything. So it's gonna look a little bit like this. Um, so if it's record, then we're gonna take the handle, or rather, a reference to the handle, and new handle is going to be audio, is going to be. Um, Let's see, audio clip, which we'll hopefully be able to import. Come on, here we go now. Um, we'll say audio clip record. And this returns the results, so I actually need that as well. Um, and then we set handle to that and we call the callback. Okay, so now our, let's see, it needs a name, darn it, okay, so um, I guess it does, we have a way to generate a name um, when we're recording, if it's none, we do local now format blah blah blah, so we're just going to use that as a name. And I guess this is already going pretty long, so I'm going to add a way to actually change the name in a future episode. Um, um, having issues with autocomplete, but that's okay. I'm going to um, import the Chrono Prelude so that we get access to this. Okay, so now we have a git streaming function that we need to handle over here as well. Um, so it's going to look similar, it's just going to be whether this handle is some. And this looks promising, um, so I'm going to try building it. Um, and so there's a few things we're going to need to do on this slide. The first is add another on click handler. Um, but instead of for setting the current current uh, clip ID, we're going to use that to set the current tab um, over here. Okay, so this is going to be set current tab recording. Okay, so that's going to fail because it's not a function. This succeeded. Um, just need to restart Electron. All right, so now we should be able to switch back to this tab. And if we're playing here, switching to that tab will just stop. Okay, so um, let's see. Now we're going to, this, is in, this honestly should probably be in reverse order. I'm just going to do that now. Um, 
So this is a weird function because it reverses the elements in the array in place and returns a reference to it. So make of that what you will. Okay, now the most now the newest one is first, which is a which is nicer. Okay, so I guess the very newest is the record one. Yeah, that, that's kind of clean. Okay, so we're going to um, make something that looks similar to this, but instead of, of um, for playing, it's going to be for recording. So it's going to be if the current clip ID is null, um, is that the way we phrased it here? Um, oh no, it was, re it was re record tab selected. So I guess those are equivalent, but if the record tab is selected, then we um, have something like this. Um, we'll now call record. There isn't a call back over here. Um, and if that happens, we're calling stop. That looks pretty good. Um, okay, so we'll need an icon for when we're done. Um, done with our uh, playback. We're done with our recording rather, so that's going to be the stop icon. Um, and so similar to before, we're going to add another one. This is actually getting a little bit excessive even by my standards, so I'm going to create another file called icons.rs and I'm going to put those, um, these paths in there. Hope I copied SVG, I meant to copy uh, JSX. Okay, so moving these over there. And we're going to import all of those. Amazing. Okay, so continuing on, we have record tab selected. Um, I say stop right here. I'm going to call that complete recording. Um, and otherwise, it's going to be the record icon. I'm going to say start recording. Okay. Um, so going back over here, we need to handle stop for this case. So this again will be when we have a handle, and we have a we have a function for this. It's going to be handle dot um, or if like some handle um, equals handle dot take. I think that's how you do it. Uh, so that will set it to none and give us a give us a record handle if it is none. Then we're going to call handle dot stop. I think, and that gives us an audio clip, and we're going to save that to the database. Um, again, right now, with um, right now, this is not happy. Uh, some things are working. Autocomplete is not working. Cargo clip is still is thankfully. And there's a result which we need to use. Uh, same thing as before. We take it there. Then we can move out to scale. All that jazz. Um, and this returns the result. And we will need to call OK down here. OK, something like that. Um, and I will Let's run that again. Okay, so I'm going to run this. And I'm hoping um, that this is basically going to work. Um, yeah, no, this, this I think is going to work.
All right, this is a new recording. And look at there, the recording just appeared. All right, this is a new recording. Um, so I still technically have to implement, um, I still technically have to implement um, importing and exporting, but I'm gonna do that in a separate episode just because this is going so long. Um, but thank you so much for watching. Um, if you enjoyed this, please like, comment, and subscribe. Did I do that right? Um, and yeah, just let me know what you think. And I'll see you soon.